Praise the Lord, everybody, man. It's your boy. Um, we starting our show, man. My son Turner and behind the scenes. Uh, just to let you guys know before I go into depth uh, with my side, um, just wanted to let you guys know that uh, we will not be able to answer any comments that come up. Uh, we thank everybody that's for tuning in, but we are not taking any questions or anything like that so we can keep it going. Um, and I don't have the answers for everything. I'm just giving y'all my part of life and what God has brought me through and what he's taken me through and where he's taken me to. Um, so really, I can't give any um, answers or advice to anyone that I could say that is all right. I'm just telling you what God has done for me. So I just like to thank y'all before I start and let y'all know that I really appreciate it. And we really appreciate the love and support that we get it from everybody with my son Turner and Movement for Christ. So like I said before, just to introduce my Myself. My name is Mr. Louie Leonard Johnson II. Um, I am a part of Movement for Christ. Uh, my son, Turner and Movement for Christ. Uh, we are based out of Richmond, California um, right now, but we are a group of young people just striving and trying to be better and trying to get ourselves to where we need to be as Christians and followers of Christ. Um, like we said before, this show is not just about us behind the scenes going to different things and different engagements that we have. This is our life stories of different things that are happening in our lives, but coming together as a group to support each other and to really just uh, give each other some support. Sometimes that's all somebody needs is just support or a listening ear to let them and help them go through whatever they're going through. A lot of times we have people and we just say that they're striving for attention, but everybody needs attention. If you say that you don't, then it's a lie. Um, you know, uh, really, I just want to be real on here and really just give y'all my side of the story and what God is doing with me and what's been happening with me. Um, just to start off, I just thank God really and truly uh, because, uh, this yesterday had just made a year since God had, uh, really just, uh, saved me and took over my life. Um, I had a mishap where my grandmother had passed away. One of the matri uh, matriarchs of my family had passed away. Um, my mother, my other mother, and, um, I got really sick and, um, I own a hair salon, just a FYI in the Bay area, Oakland, California, shout out to Oakland, California. Um, I own a hair salon and I work with the public. And so I had got meningitis from one of my clients. And for about three months, I was just going with this, uh, disease. I had had it. I didn't even know. Um, I was taking street medication, trying to, suppress the pain and everything that was going on. I didn't have no idea what was going on. Just me thinking as a young man, I'm thinking that I'm working and I'm just working too much. We had moved just from Antioch, California back to San Francisco in a matter of 30 days. I had about 25 clients. Plus I moved um, because my wife um, was pregnant with our, uh, with our daughter that's now three. And, um, and through this whole time, uh, the whole month, I was getting different prescription pills from uh, different clients and stuff to just try to ease the pain and trying to get rid of things um, that I was feeling in my body, not knowing the whole time that I was struggling with meningitis. Um, on the day of my grandmother's home going service, uh, I had a mishap where they said that my brain overloaded or fried or whatever they call it. Thank God for my son, uh, Mr. Louie Johnson III. Um, for letting my wife know something was wrong with me and I got rushed to the hospital on that Saturday. I didn't wake up until that Monday, but um, God is good. Um, every family member that I had at my grandmother's home going service was up at the hospital and they came out to see me. Some of the members from my churches um, came out to see me and pray over me. They had different prayer lines going on and I really thank them. The ladies that was there that really supported my wife when that time was going on, um, because I know it was difficult for her to have two kids and to really go through this and they tell you that your husband is about to pass away and you don't really know what's about to happen. Um, I thank all the ladies, Sister Yvette, Hashima, Sister Angela, um, all the ladies that was there. Uh, I don't even, I, didn't, I, I should never even just mention just names because I don't want to miss anybody, but any lady that was there that, that helped to support my wife, I really appreciate it. Um, I, I was in a messed up situation, man. They told my wife that I was going to die, that if I didn't 
uh, died that I would come out and I wouldn't be able to walk or talk, but I serve a living God that showed up and showed out in that hospital. And when I woke up, the doctor was trying to say it was because of my blood and because of, oh, you have a good DNA. And that's why you uh, withstanded what happened to you instead of dying. And I told him it was only God. And uh, not everybody believes in God, but I'm a firm believer that God showed up and showed out in there because when I woke up, I knew my name. I knew where, uh, how old I was, everything. They didn't have to feed me anything or anything. I, I got up and I knew who I was and I was in my right mind. And I thank the Lord for blessing me to be in my right mind. Um, a lot of people that go through meningitis, they either lose their hearing, they either lose uh, sight, they either lo uh, lose um, just memory. It's so much stuff that goes along with that. Um, and uh, I just thank God. I thank God that he really blessed me and he really kept me in that moment. Um it was so much, like I said, that was on my wife, and I appreciate her. Um, my wife, Ms. Jaquilla Johnson, Drew, uh, Drew Johnson, but I appreciate her to the fullest for everything that God had put inside of her and the women that she had around her that was praying and holding her up while she was praying. Um, and, uh, yeah, like I said before, I was in the hospital for those good three weeks, ICU for two weeks, um, and it was so much going on, and it was so much... Uh, people talking and people saying things because like I said I know a lot of people in the Bay Area so it was going around that I tried to commit suicide or I overdosed or something like that I was taking doing drugs and I tried to kill myself because of my grandmother passed away that was not right I did not try to do anything to take my life or anything to that such it really hurt me that my grandmother did pass away but I would never do that never take my life and I have a family I have a wife and kids to take care of so it was just really hurtful to me that I heard some of the friends and people that were supposed to be family members that were putting lies out about me that I was trying to take my own life because of my grandmother passing away yes it took a lot out of me but I really 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 felt some type of way because I had so many different rumors and lies that was going on and no one never really called to see about me. People were just hearing third party stories and they were going to saying this and saying that. But like I said before, I appreciate the people that did keep it real and came to see me. Uh, all my real friends that came out to come and see me at the hospital. I really appreciate that because y'all really held my wife up and y'all really held my family up through this time that I was going through that we were going through. Um, like I said, um, the reason that I am in this group because of my son Turner and I've been knowing him for the last uh, 20 something years. And uh, ever since, he has been a real brother to me. And what kind of man would I not be to support another man that has a goal of being better and being a father and being a provider and being somebody good in this earth? Um, a lot of times we don't find too many men that have that on their mind, that want to be good men, that want to strive to be a man that can take care of his family and just live out a good life. You know, not saying that everything is perfect um, and there's no hard times. Um it's just that you want to strive to be better. Um, and I just thank my son for that, for being that friend to me, being that person that when I couldn't talk to nobody else and tell other people things that he was really there as a friend and kept it solid with me. Some of the things I did not want to hear, he still told me because he was being a real friend. A lot of times we have these people around us that always are yes men and people that will stroke our ego to try to make us feel better and never keep it real with us and let us go down a path where we destroy ourselves or prolong the purpose that God has on us because we we take things in our own situation and we have a mindset of sometimes me, me, me. Um, and I just thank my brother for keeping it solid and being a friend and being around when my wife needed him. Um, I really appreciate that, brother. So all I can do is sit back and support the movement and the uh, vision that God has given my brother with this group. Um, like I said before, we have some amazing young people that is in this group. And all together, we come collectively as my son, Turner, and Movement for Christ. And I just thank all of them also for being real friends and everything that's been going on now in my life. I thank some of them because they've been helping me through it, just their conversation just being um, not negative Nancy's or you know just having positive things going on in their life I really thank them for that because it has taken me a long way um, just to get rid of that though um, 
that is my story with that. Um, God has really just blessed my life and really kept me um, this year. This year, I have seen so many things. When I was in a hospital, um, I know that I was really depressed and I was crying and I was asking God to really help me provide for my family. I'm not a man that wants a handout. I'll get up every day and hustle for my family. It's nothing to me because that's what my father did for my family. So that's all I know. All I know is to get up and be a man and work every day and try to provide for your family and try to be the man that you need to be. A lot of times we have these people um, with the misconception that you are supposed to get handouts and that you are just entitled to certain things and we are entitled to a lot but if you don't get up and get out and do what you need to do um you will never reach the goals in your life that you are looking to meet um i have a lot of goals in my life my goal my major goal is to build an empire to where my kids kids can eat off of what my labor was and god told me that he would do that for me and he would keep me if i do what he told me to do um one of the main reasons that i feel like that uh problem happened to me was because I wasn't listening to God. God called me into ministry a long time ago, but because Leonard didn't want to do it, I didn't listen. And I did other things that I felt that I wanted to do and ministries that I wanted to be a part of, not what God had called me to be. So God had told me a long time ago that he was going to do something dramatic to me if I did not listen to him. Now, me thinking that I was thinking when I get older, in my 40s, in my 50s, that if I didn't listen, then he would probably do something to get my attention. Me not knowing that in my early 30s that God will sit me down and really talk to me and tell me um, that you need to do what I said to do and not what man said to do. I've been licensed as a minister for the last four years, three years. And um, I'm not able to use my ministering license everywhere. Um, everybody doesn't accept it. I mean, I don't know. But I've been ministering for a while, and I've been having my license for a while. I thank God for my spiritual father, Pastor Robbie Robinson, um, out of Oakland, California. Uh, my big brother, uh, my some of my kids, godparents, him and his wife, Lady Robinson, Sister Simeon. I really thank y'all because that's another person, another man that I had in my life that really kept a prayer over me and checking on me. And when I was going through my struggle and working with these churches and everything, he would still call me. And even if I wasn't working with him, he would still call me and just tell me good things and tell me to keep my head on straight and keep a positive mind no matter what's going on. And I really thank uh, my spiritual father for that. I have a lot of different uh, males that act as fathers in my life. I thank God for my father, like I said, Reggie Williams. And then I thank God for my spiritual father, Pastor Robbie Robinson. I thank God for uh, my godparents, the uh, Johnson, Robert and Ronzi Johnson. Um, I thank God for all the men that I come across that try to act uh, as father figures in my life. Um, I really thank y'all for that. Um, it really has helped me out as a man. Um, the way that I look at life, the way that I look at being a husband, then a father, then a family member, and then a friend um, in that order. Exactly. Being a father, being a, uh, being a husband, excuse me, being a father, being a family member, and then being a friend. Um, I thank God that they have instilled that in me. Um, a lot of times I come across a lot of people that feel like I have um, this thing about me that I feel like I'm better than people or I'm arrogant or something like that. It's never been that. It's never been because of my uh, talent that God has given me that I feel like I'm all of this. The only reason that I walk in the way that I walk is because of the way that the men have raised me to feel and see that I am a great man and that no matter what happens, good or bad, that I am still great. And it's not because of I can sing or anything like that. I don't even really feel that I can sing like that. But I do feel that God has given me a power inside of me that I can make an atmosphere change and a worship come on in a place. Now, I do know that. But I do not feel that I am the best singer because I know there's a lot of great singers. I know a lot of people from the Bay that can out sing me. But one thing I do know, I can make an atmosphere move if the uh, people are on one accord and we are really going to worship. God has given me that power. And I thank God for that power, making an atmosphere be changed into worship, to worship him. Not about me, but to worship him, to give him glory. And I thank him for that. Um, I do work at a few churches and I do do ministry and I'm very grateful with the churches that I'm able to work at um, 
this has made just uh, this year also, this has made 17 years since I have really been working for churches. Um, and like I said before, with my sons also, is really the one that really brought me into working with churches. And I didn't want to use my gift back then because I was church hurt. People say, what is church hurt? Church hurt is when you go to church and you give yourself and you get um, bamboozled. You are treated bad. You are not wanted. You are overlooked. Um, uh, different ways that people use God to get over on people and then try to use it and um, tear them down and using their pulpits and using that as a scapegoat because you're up there so you feel like that you can say whatever and put people down. Um, that's one thing that I, 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 I really struggle with because as of a man, I always felt and my father always told me that a man should respect another man. So when I come across some of these pastors and some of these people that I felt like didn't respect me as a man, then it went to the next level. It was not me disrespecting them, but if I'm a man and you're a man, you respect me as such as I would respect you. So I am a married man. I am a father and I've been married for eight years, almost eight years now. So as such as you respect me, I would respect you. So so, um, you know, I, I never wanted to be the one, as they say, confrontational um, and always wanted to be right or anything to that such. But I know who I am. For a long time, I had uh, doubts and I had uh, misconceptions on who I was because of some of the people that poured toxic things into me, the older people that I was hanging around. So I didn't know who I really was. And, you know, um, I just thank God for... I just really thank God for everything um, that he blessed me with knowing who I am and learning how to be the man that I am. Um, like I said before, it's nothing about being arrogant or anything to that such or thinking I'm all of that. But I will walk in the standard if I know who Louie Leonard Johnson is. I know that I am a father. I know that I am a husband. I know that I am a great man and other besides just singing. I have other great qualities about myself. So I will hold myself up to that. Never belittle yourself because other people want to belittle you because they feel some type of way about their self. Um, a lot of times I come across these older men that try to belittle these young men that are coming up because they see greatness inside of them. And because they weren't able to tap into that in their youth, they feel some type of way and they want to tear down others and they want to put this toxic into these young people. So a, a tradition of, of, of abuse, um, mental abuse keeps going on from generation to generation. Um, like I said before, um, I have been in a situation where I came from a background where I had um, a lot of different people that they say that shouldn't uh, raise kids or you won't come out right if you come from the hood or if you are uh, around this or around that. Um, I know earlier in my years, my parents was young, so I grew around with some of my uncles and friends, my dad's friends and them being pimps and drug dealers and different things to that such and they raised me to be a good man it doesn't matter like i said before what you come up under is what you take it to when you get older and how you use it um like i said before i thank god that he opened up gates to where my mind had been different and that my dad didn't want me around the situation so he banned me from anything like that and if I was ever caught up in something like that my dad would have put hands on me straight up so you know um is 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 good that um that he protected me from things but I got to see different parts and different aspects of life um it's crazy that um that I say that um uh, I got to see different parts because my grandmother um kept me in church but then when I would go with my dad or my other side I would see a other part of life um I thank God for both of my grandmothers my mom mom and my dad's mom um both of them raised me inside of church both of them were church women um and um I thank God for the word and the um uh, the 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 love of church that they poured into me um we are losing a generation now because a lot of kids didn't have to go to church like we did. Uh, when I was younger, uh, my grandmothers, you either went to church or you didn't do anything at all. Um, 
We don't have that now in society. A lot of people don't send their kids to church. We are not forcing our children to learn who God is. The only reason they mostly learn about God is if they're going to a funeral or something to that such. And so that's when our young people are really encountering God because of death. What's sad is, is that we have all these people that say that they're church people and that we all go to church every Sunday and you have kids in your house, but yet and still we don't install that in our houses. Um, that's one thing in my household. My kids know who God is and that he is first and that he comes before daddy and daddy puts him before everything. So you worship him in spirit and in truth. You do not play with him. He is not a toy. So when you come to him, you come to him real. Yes, we all have downfalls. Yes, we all have different things going on in our life that are not perfect. But yet and still, we are all still covered by grace and his mercy. So no matter what, God can still protect you no matter if you kill somebody drugs um 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 lying backbiting sleeping with this person sleeping with that person god can still save you no matter what man don't listen to what people say when they say that they're a christian they are not living right every everybody 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 has stuff that they're going through and everybody has flaws everybody has some skeletons in their closets that they would not want anybody else to know and thank god that only god knows um and I'm serious, y'all. I have a lot uh, of young people that are tuning in right now and that I work with. Um, and I really appreciate y'all, young man. And I tell y'all all the time, man, um, it's a struggle, man. Every day, every day is a struggle trying to be a good man. Every day is a struggle trying to keep a positive mind when you got all this negative stuff going on. Every day is a struggle to try to be a man that can keep a smile on his face so when you have that smile no matter what if you go outside and somebody sees that smile you might touch their heart or touch them because they've been going through something every day it's hard and i just really just ask y'all to uh really just try to change it up man we need to really come together as the bay area man um we are coming up as a group right now that is um striving really to get out there not just to be seen but we have a talent that we put so much into and that we really care about and i just want to see something come out of what i've been putting all of my time to um that's really my goal it's not really to make billions of dollars or anything like that my goal is to reach some lives and help some lives but still be able to provide for my family with what i have worked with um all I want to do is just live a life where I got money to feed and provide for my family and just live a good life, man. It's it's not long. We never know when we're going to go. We never know how long we're going to be here. So while I am here, I just want to be able to give to my family and be the man that I need to be. Um, through this, I hope y'all really get to see who I am. I know a lot of people have different misconceptions about me, who I am, because you hear different things from different people, either that don't like me or don't really know me, but you really hear different things. Um, I'm really a down to earth person, man. And I really thank, um, all the people that really rock with me, you know, that really know me. Um, I love all of y'all and I thank all of y'all for being a part of my life, um, Right now, my main goal is to really be a man that gives back, just not to my family, but to young men that I see around me, pull their coattail like a man, some of these dudes did for me. They pulled my coattail and let me know, you know, just don't go for any hokey okey doke. Um, really be you. You know, you don't have to be like everybody else. Be an individual. What makes you different is God made us all different. None of us are the same. Everybody is different. And so you have to walk in there knowing that you are different and that God bless you to be different so you can stand up and stand out. Um, like I said before, I just bless and I thank God for just letting me work with ministry right now. I'm working um, with two churches and um, one of my main churches um, in San Francisco that I'm working with right now is uh, Calvary Hill Community Church where Pastor Joseph Bryan Jr. is my pastor. Um, and I just thank God for uh, working and being in the ministry where I met my wife. Um, that is the ministry where I found my uh, diamond in the roof. Uh, I came to Calvary Hill to come and work and um, actually see my wife working with the dance ministry with the young ladies. And as um, soon as I seen her, God told me that that was going to be my wife. And um, I just thank 
God for Calvary Hill, for her mother and Calvary Hill and the women that were there that were pouring into my wife. Um, I can really say that God has blessed me with an incredible wife um, that really stands up and stands out amongst a lot of women that I see. Um, I come across a lot of women every day because, like I said, I do women's hair. Um, I, uh, we own a hair salon in Oakland, California. He did it hair salon. Um, uh, and uh, the Royal Touch. Um, I'm sorry, that was an old one. <laughs> the Royal Touch Hair Salon. Um, and so I just thank God. Uh, I just thank God for her um, and for everything that's going on right now. Uh, we are driving right now, y'all, so I'm sorry. I'm looking at traffic and <laughs> different things. Um, but uh, I just wanted to give you guys my part one of my uh, introduction of who I am and being a part of my son Turner and Movement for Christ. Um, I hope I didn't wild out too much for y'all. Um, y'all was under this uh, stand everything that I was trying to say. And I hope you got something out of what I was trying to give. Um, like I said, I'm not here to give any advice because I'm not perfect. I'm not um, a psychologist or anything to that such. But I'm just telling you who God is in my life and what he's done for me. Part two will go on um, in two more days. So y'all share this and like this and put it out there, man, so y'all can really hear part two on what I'm about to talk about with ministry. Uh, we are going to do each uh, other week. We're going to have different people from the group. Next week, y'all going to see my boy, um, the visionary of uh, this uh, whole group, uh, Mr. My Son Turner himself, my little brother, man. Top hat off to you, man. Um, and uh, you guys are going to see his side of the story and uh, his part of behind the scenes of my son Turner and Movement for Christ. Like I said, y'all don't want to miss this, man. We're about to get real live and direct, man. Y'all really about to hear some stuff um, about our lives and different things that we have encountered. Um, not to put anybody on Mac Blast or anything like that or to... Um, to uh, talk down on any ministry or anything about that. That's not what this is about. This is really about just us uh, letting you guys know about our life and knowing the struggles that we go through every day um, as young men and young women of God. Uh, so always please put this first, that uh, this is not to tear down anybody. We will not be putting anybody on Mac Blast, talking bad on anybody because we have all these people on social media that's following us. This is not for that. This is for you to know about the group and what we have coming up and just who we are behind the scenes so you don't think that every day is just a holy day where we have everything uh, perfect. It's not that. We all have struggles. We all have things going on in our life. So I hope you all got something out of this. Y'all pray for me, man. Keep your boy in your prayer and my family. Once again, this is my son, Turner and Movement for Christ, and my uh, half of Behind the Scenes with Mr. Leonard Johnson, uh, Louie Leonard Johnson II. Holla back at your boy.